This is Rebecca Prinster, Assistant Curator of History at the Albuquerque Museum. It is July 26, 2019, and we are in the photo archives at the museum. Uh, we are interviewing Bernie Butterfield today, and this is the first time that we have interviewed him. So if you could please state your name. Bernie Butterfield, Butterfield Jewelers. All right. And your birth date and place? 82328. Were you Go born in Albuquerque? I was born in Pena, Illinois. Okay. Little town south of Decatur. Okay. When did you start working at Butterfield? I started working at Butterfield when I was about seven or eight years, nine years old. My our, my job was to, my, my father used to get china and crystal, and they'd come in barrels of straw. My bro older brother would get this asthma attack always when we went to take him out, and I didn't bother me. <laughs> so I just was, my job was to take this crystal and china out of these barrels, and etc. So I, I started very young. Wow. Although I originally wanted to be a chicken farmer, and at 9 or 10 I was raising chickens. I was working in a little hatchery store that uh, the farmers bring the eggs in, and I would trade the eggs in to the trays. And if they didn't hatch, I could take them home. I had 300 chickens when I was about 10 years old. Wow. I had the backyard <laughs> garage chickens. I had, I had chickens. <laughs> but my father decided he had, I was to be the jeweler. <laughs> so I became a jeweler. <laughs> and when, how old were you when the store moved to Albuquerque? I was uh, 14, I believe it was. We moved here in 1945, 44. 45, and we, uh, I was went to Albuquerque High School, graduated in 46. People say, how come we got to Albuquerque? My mother had asthma and breathing problems, and the doctors in Illinois said, you got to get to a dry climate. So the reason we got to Albuquerque, they were heading to San Diego, they got to Tucson in July. <laughs> Turn back. <laughs> Oh, and they had gasoline coupons, and okay. they were just, but anyway, <laughs> I always tell people, yeah, they, they got to Tucson in July, and they came back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, okay. makes, that makes sense. <laughs> um, so when did you take on the operation of the business? My father died in 1954, and I had gone to a watchmaking to precision instruments laboratory in California right after high school. So I worked much for my. Get me a drink. Here. I drank you. Ah. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Just a second here. So I took over the operation in 1954. He had a heart attack and died. Mm -hmm. We were down on Central Avenue from 54 to 75, and of course the riots were in 71. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can remember those vividly. <laughs> yeah. I got a couple of stories I'll tell you on that as they come around. Yeah. What do you remember about the store in Central? Well, it was small and quaint and very uh, nicely laid out. It was right across from the university, so we got a lot of good university business and mm -hmm. lots and lots and lots of engagement rings and wedding rings and things. Uh, I just remember it being very friendly and we tried to do the best job we could service-wise. And we have put 91 years under our belts now. Wow. <laughs> Which is not too bad for an independent. Yeah. Fourth generation. I have my, excuse me, I have my daughter run, and my son-in-law and my uh, son. My son just retired, so now it's my my uh, fourth generation. Wow. So the day of the riot, that was June 19? June, June 14th, June 14, uh -huh. 1971. Yeah. What do you remember about that day? Well, there was a rumor, there was, there was a rumor that there was going to be some problems. There was a bunch of people over in Roosevelt Park that were rowdy. And then it seemed like, I can't remember the exact timing, I think it was just before noon, 
we heard they were down Central Avenue, coming up Central Avenue, breaking out windows and, and not, knocking things down. And then, they, of course, the next thing we heard they were at Gallus at uh, uh, University Avenue there. Mm -hmm. Well, by that time, we were, didn't know what to do, you know. There was, so I, I was up on the roof with a shotgun. I was going to shoot in the air. <laughs> I knew I wouldn't want to shoot them or I'd get in really trouble. But I, so anyway, I got up on the roof and I was watching. And here they came. Well, the thing that happened that was sort of annoying, if you want to know, is be just before they, I got the word about being at Gallus, the uh, National Guard showed up right across the street. And I thought, well, surely they'll give us a little protection. Because a couple of them came over and stood in front of the store, or stood close by. Well, the riders came up, and of course, they immediately broke our windows out and went inside and robbed us of a bunch of jewelry. And the, the, the National Guard didn't do a thing. They just stood there and watched it happen, hmm. which was sort of disappointing to think of. but. Uh, Anyway, we survived, and uh, we're still going strong. We stayed there then until 1975, and my mother finally said, Bernie, you've got to get out of there before they kill you, because we had got burned out twice and burglarized a couple of times, and just seemed like next thing you know, robbery's coming along. <laughs> and after the riots, it was sort of, how much long do we put up with this? Wow. So you mentioned that there was a rumor that there would be some trouble. Do you remember? Yeah, I can't remember too much of that except that we knew there was some rioters coming up Central Avenue. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was pretty well known knowledge. The, the Roosevelt Park thing was just sort of a hearsay from somebody who said, oh, there's a whole bunch of kids. Uh, and they were all kids. I mean, I talked about, you know, I think they were, I had to be high school and, and maybe university kids. Uh, I didn't see very many adults, though. So. But anyway, um, I just got a, got the story from somebody that there were a whole bunch of kids in Roosevelt Park, and they were going to cause trouble. Mm -hmm. Do you do you remember what kind of damage the store? Um, Our store. Mm -hmm. How many dollars or how many about it? Oh, at that time we had to have the whole front end of the store rebuilt. We had a very, very good relationship with a contractor, and uh, he came along and rebuilt our front of the store for nothing, oh, wow. which was very nice of him. Yeah. I think the glass work on the show pins was about three or four thousand dollars, and they stole, I, as I best of my memory, they stole about fifteen thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Wow. How long did the recovery process take? I assume you were closed. Well, we were, or? we we were able to operate, just you know, little bit by little bit. The glass on the windows was no big problem. That was over a, like a one day deal. Mm -hmm. The uh, front end work was done. We took uh, took several days, but it was done in such a way that didn't disturb our in store operation. So we were we were right back in business the next day. Okay. Um, let's see. What do you remember about the nearby businesses? Well, of course, we had a filling station on one corner, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we had an ice cream company on the next corner, and I don't think either one of them were hit. Uh, they seemed like they got up to the university, and it, uh, apparently the National Guard did put the fear of God in them, because it seems to me they didn't go much past the university, and it could have been because of the National Guard being there. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to any of the National Guardsmen? No, I didn't have no. a chance to. They were, they were sort of aloof. They didn't. Hmm. They were just, you know, they were just standing around doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. But they were imposing. I've got to say that way. <laughs> and I think they scared them off. Mm -hmm. uh, what? What, if any, long-term effects did the riot have and the break-in? Well, the pluses was we got an awful lot of publicity, front-page coverage. 
<laughs> if you want to call that good coverage. Mm -hmm. But we did get a lot of sympathy from this public and and that they you know we just it's just one of those things we always uh, we always try to support any civic thing that we could kids clubs and things and uh, I think it just sort of was a, it was sort of a little bit of a plus factor it cost us money but I think it was most of it was covered by insurance so mm -hmm. we were not out of pocket that much uh, my mother was mostly disturbed by all. I still remember said, Bernie, you've got to get out of there before they kill you. <laughs> mm. And uh, like I say, we had enough stuff going on that could have happened. But I, I it would like to say the negative part was, of course, I don't know, it was just sort of a, well, we're in a bad place, we're going to have to do something about it. Mm. Yeah. Do you remember, or did you have any interaction with the people who were breaking in? You said you were hit by a rock, but... None whatsoever. I, uh, like I said, I was standing there next to the cop, policeman, and all of a sudden a rock hit me in the head. And I, mm. and I have a picture standing there with me, blood streaming down. Mm. <laughs> you don't have it. I, I, I couldn't find them. And I just saw it a couple of days ago. Mm. I'll find it if you still like to see it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, do, you, do you remember much about the summer of 1971 after the riots as far as the feeling in town and well the general feeling around in town as far was that well what are we where are we heading to, where are we heading to you know this stuff going on and uh, there'd been a lot of uh, fires you know they we we got set on fire fire twice and um uh, it just seemed to me that whole area of time there was disturbances going on here and there, mm -hmm. a lot of rioting, I, as I recall. Huh. And I, it was a very uncomfortable, you guys were, okay. it was a real uncomfortable period of time because you just said, I wonder what's going to happen next. Right. Hmm. Let's see. Um, so as a member of the neighborhood, did you have an impression of Roosevelt Park? It was just far enough away. We had no no relationship or no nothing nothing really to do with it with the park, mm -hmm. other than that was the gathering place where they all met. Mm -hmm. What about Yale Park? Uh, that was right across the street, and uh, that's where they all all the all riders sort of stopped there. As I remember, that was their stopping place, and that's where the National Guard were basically guarding the university. Mm -hmm. The uh, governor obviously had called them in, and they were protecting the university, and, and they, there was a couple of them came across the street, but they didn't do anything. And, they, and the kids, I don't know, they were, you can see them here going in and out. You know, you can see them there. They were uh, spicy windows. And, whatever you call it. Yeah, they had, uh, like see, we didn't have much relation with them, but uh, they were there. <laughs> yeah. How, lo how long were people looting the store? Do you oh, remember? probably okay. half hour or so. Okay. Yeah, they were, you know, they were in and out. There was a whole bunch of them. I'd, you know, you can see a bunch of them here, with them, 10 times that number. I don't know how many, I was up on the roof thinking, should I take a shot or should I not? Yeah. I was ready to defend my myself and my property, but I took the better way out and decided I'd, I'd replace this stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have any other comments about the riot? Or? Nothing really that I think of. I, I'd say the, I, I can't remember vividly, but nothing that, you know, strikes out except we were just what do we do next? What do we? What do we do next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the next was to get out of there, that area as quick as we could. So it took a couple of years because we owned the property there, and mm. my father bought that when we got here in 1946 when we got to Albuquerque. And so when he bought our property up on uh, San Pedro Butterfield Plaza, and we've been going strong again. Son, my daughter, my son-in-law, my 
although my son is retiring at 65. So we'll see what happens next. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you still work in the store? I don't go in full time anymore. I gave it up at 90. I figured, <laughs> that, <laughs> I figured that's a good round number. Yeah. So I had a great big birthday party and retirement party last year. Oh. So uh, this year I'm going 91. I'll, I'll see how things go. I go in and pick up my mail and make a phone call or two. And I, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little. Mm -hmm. I'm more relation, more PR work. I go to about four different clubs and city of Albuquerque golf uh, board. And uh, I'll tell you where I spend a lot of my time hitting golf balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try, trying to hit golf balls. <laughs> yeah. I've had a good time. I've had a good run over the years. I, I There isn't much I haven't done. Well, do you have any questions for us? No, I don't. Other than just, what's the time? What's the time deal, and where will it be? And um, stuff. Okay. Uh, Bernie Butterfield, Butterfield Jewelry. We were down on Central Avenue from, <coughs> excuse me, forty-five to seventy-five, but they widened Central Avenue once, twice while we were there. Every morning. I would go, a friend of mine named Nugget Grosstead had Everready Oil Company, come by the store, would go to Chisholm's and have a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. It was just tradition, every, it seemed like every morning, here comes Nugget. One night, Nugget comes running up to the store, Bernie, Bernie, we got to do something, we got to do something. I said, God, what do we got to do, Nugget, what do we got He says, they're up at, up at Girard and they're going to widen Central Avenue. They, there was nothing about it in the papers. I mean, there's no information that I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what, like, what the hell can we do? To, they're going to widen it. We're going to stop them? <laughs> he says, they're going to widen it 16 feet, 8 on each side. And you know what that's going to do to our side of the street? Ooh. Our start it was here with the sidewalk and our jewelry store. That would put the street right at our, practically, our front door. Oh, my. Well, what do we do? He says, he says, well, I know the governor, Campbell, and he says, aren't you a Sigma Chi? I am, yes. And I said, uh, he said, well, Pope Joy, Pre President Pope Joy of the University is a Sigma Chi. Why don't you go talk to him? <laughs> so I, got, I went right over and he took me right in. I just, I said, we got to do something. I said, if we, if this happens, <clears throat> Central Avenue will be a slum. I mean, it will. Every business will have no parking, no place for customers to stay. Mm -hmm. It's just, so he looked, he said, I'll do what I get. The next morning, instead of taking eight foot each side, they moved 12 foot over on university and four foot on our side. Nice. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. and that was all the way from Girard to University Boulevard. Because wow. all of the university, all that was a bunch of weeds and tumbleweeds and uh -huh. there was no buildings long to speak of. They hadn't got into their building phase yet. so. It was sort of, but I thought that was a absolutely, you know, it's something you don't see or how could this happen overnight? Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about a week or a month with all kinds of planning. They just shifted everything like that. Instead of going over here, they went over here. Isn't that amazing? Wow. You ever heard a story like that? No. <laughs> anyway, that's my, that's my other story of fame. Nice. <laughs> so, Thank you. All right. That's great. Well, thank